Hello and welcome back to our Vlandian Knight. Now, we're in a battle against a pretty large Kuzate force, and I'm by myself. Yeah, if you can believe it, I'm actually by myself. I uh, disbanded the army a while ago, mainly due to the fact that, well, they were pretty much, as I said before, very much eating me out of house and home. And uh, I did actually call for another one, if you can believe it. So basically what happened was at the end of the previous episode, I decided, hey, you know what? Let's go on a bit of a siege spree. So I took two of the easy to take castles nearby and then uh, I went on to the third one that I wanted to take because I wanted to do a little bit off screen because let's face it, if I can auto resolve castles, you, yeah, I mean, you, you don't really want to see auto resolving. I mean, auto resolving is just very, very simple to do and uh, it is just not really necessary. So um, to, sh to show that that is because it's basically just me clicking some buttons, but <laughs> you know, but um, basically I went on to the third one and then amazing amounts of vassals appeared out of nowhere and have now started to attack us. So that is the fight that you are indeed seeing now. And hopefully we are going to be okay to deal some damage to them. And uh, I think we're, we're so far doing quite well, as you can no doubt tell by the combat strength diminishing at an alarming rate for the opponents. I really don't know. I really don't know why this is. Um, but I am very pleased to say that we are not on the receiving end of it. That's all I can really be thankful for, to be honest. And let's move my archers up a little bit. We've got, we've got to be a bit careful here. Again, can't stress this enough. We really do not want to die. Oh yeah, by the way, I think after this particular series has reached its inevitable conclusion, it would probably be a pretty cool idea for us to update to the newest version, try to get as many of uh, the mods that I currently have installed as well, because obviously I don't know whether they are compatible with 1.5.0 or 1.5.x in this case, because there's a whole bunch of update, uh, updates happening, you know, 1.5.1, 1.5.2 and so on. And um, I'm not entirely sure which one works with what anymore. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see because it's been a while since I have indeed modded the game because obviously if I'm playing one series and one game version, there's no need for me to change things up at all. So generally I do tend to uh, just leave it alone for the moment and uh, just concentrate on what I'm currently doing. Oh, that was a bad, bad hit on my part. Okay, we might be in for some trouble here. Potentially. Oh, no, he's dead. Thank you. Ah, uh, no, I want... Ah, uh, never mind. Okay, I wanted that one. I wanted that horse, but I guess any horse will do better than none. Uh, oh, well, never mind. Okay, so yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, so if we do upgrade to 1.5.0, I think that's going to be super fun because the death mechanic is actually going to be implemented. And I can't wait for that. I know that seems like a really funny thing to say because let's face it, you know, it's me. And generally I am not very good at staying alive at the best of times, but you add in a, uh, well, fatal, shall we say, um, Oh, what is the word I'm looking for? You add in a, like a fatal option to the whole thing and then everything becomes that much more interesting because let's face it, someone that is really good at the game uh, is going to basically stay alive 100% of the time, right? But someone like me, who is just kind of, you know, decent but not amazing and uh, <laughs> it really depends on what I'm doing. If I'm using a, an onager to try and kill people then yes I'm definitely far below average but the point is it's going to be very interesting to see whether I will actually survive more than a month in game or something like that especially with the death option enabled because I do play with death enabled all the time in these versions and all these series so far but obviously because it was not actually implemented yet, uh, there's not much I could do about it. Anyway, we're just gonna get two of these Sturgeon Champions upgraded and then we will indeed move on. And there you go, 373 were murdered there. We only lost 21, that is insane. That is absolutely insane. 
and we gained 125 influence too, which is very nice. Okay, so we're just going to be letting everyone go, as I've said before. Generally, it is a good idea to do that because eventually some of these guys will be defecting. Some of these guys will potentially get the opportunity to be charmed and so on and so forth. Technically, this would make things very trivial, by the way. If I were to take these guys prisoner and indeed execute them, or I were to just take them prisoner and just leave them in the prisoner's hold, it would make the game quite trivial because as a result, there would be no defenders whatsoever in any facet of the enemy's empire. And as a result, we would basically have free run of the place. So if you want to be efficient and you don't care about making friends at all, then it is probably recommended to take prisoners um, but for me, I quite like being able to charm people and, and persuade them, coerce them, whatever you want to say, at a moment's notice. I think that that's a, a really fun mechanic. I think that the addition of that, especially being fleshed out just that little bit more than the basic amount of persuasion that was available in Warband, I think is a really nice thing. I gotta say, I feel like this is actually quite weird. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here, but apparently the Kuzate are just throwing whatever they can at me at this point, because now I'm being attacked by yet another relatively large force of about 900 units. And I really don't know what they're thinking, because we just defeated an army of about 800, and I don't think that extra 100 is going to really make that big of a difference, do you? No, I don't think so. But we'll see, because maybe they have better units in this one, but the combat strength doesn't really seem to illustrate that at all. So we'll see how it goes. But I do have 100 cavalry. <laughs> That's going to be very painful for the opponent to face. Let's tell them to charge in straight up here because they are very close by and we do want to eliminate them as fast as possible. Oh, heavy horse archers. Yes, they have a bunch of heavy horse archers. Okay, that's the reason why they were confident then. That's definitely the reason. Because anytime I had heavy horse archers as Byron, I was just thinking to myself, oh, this is, uh, is going to be simple. This is going to be easy. Because anytime you have those guys, especially, well, technically any kind of horse archer that is a higher tier than the basic ones, you're going to be absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Unless, as you can no doubt tell, unless you have a really strong supporting cast. And I'm talking about archers that are really good, infantry that's really good to be able to defend the archers against the overwhelming numbers of the opponent bearing down upon them as you can no doubt see that they're trying to do right here even though my infantry is actually not even doing a very good job of defending right now they have pushed them off as you can see look at that they actually beat them back which is very very good of them nice i like it but so far it doesn't seem as though the opponent is able to pretty much make a dent in any of our defenses here, which, again, is confusing to me because you would expect them to have such a large uh, contingent of cavalry, and they do, you know, but they're, they're basically throwing it away by acting first. I feel like the AI, what, what it should be doing right now is trying to perform flanking maneuvers. Any single time it has the ability to do a flanking maneuver, it is going to probably be much more effective as a result, but obviously that's just a game of cat and mouse at that point, because I am also going to be looking out for any kind of anti-cavalry attack. So if I send my cavalry in, then they come in against me, then I'm going to obviously react to that. But I don't know whether the AI has the sophistication to be able to do that at the moment, obviously because I haven't really seen them use too many complex strategies so far, which is actually kind of weird because the auto-delegation of the AI is not... It yet. Now, I'm going to say something a bit weird here because I actually don't think it's that good, but it is actually good when it's used by the AI, or at least I think it's quite good when it's used by the AI. Um, because every single time I've I've auto delegated and completely stayed out of the way, and I haven't I, and I haven't died, it's actually resulted in quite 
good results? I, I, I don't know, maybe, um, maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm actually just imagining things or something, but in the past, I've done it, and indeed, obviously the, the AI is probably using auto-delegation almost all the time. I don't think they will be, um, you know, uh, giving orders actively. I think it will just be an automated process for the most part. But yeah, I, I think that that is indeed something to, um, something to consider, because the auto-delegation, as I've said, is not actually that bad when the AI uses it. But maybe it is, because we're winning so easily. I don't know. I think it just needs to be told a little bit more about strategy and um, using the cavalry in different ways apart from just, you know, charging it up the right flank or the left flank in, in, in this case because obviously they were approaching us from the left. But I think that might need a bit of tweaking to be honest because uh, you don't really want your AI to basically do the same thing every single time which is not what they do but I would say that uh, they do it more often than not where they just send their cavalry in any old how and then I can send my cavalry in and obviously if you have an overwhelming cavalry force like I do right now it should be a relatively simple um, a relatively simple process to eliminate them all and well you can quite clearly tell that that is indeed happening we've lost 20 units so far and this is only from my own party by the way this is my own party i don't have anyone with me right now and we are completely destroying them There's a lot of people here. Massive contingent of infantry and archers. Oh, it seems like mostly archers, actually. Wow, I am very surprised that we have not destroyed them yet. But uh, I'm sure that that is about to happen. That is definitely about to happen. Oh, get him. Ah, uh, never mind. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know whether I should even bother um, attacking anyone anymore, especially with my pole arm. I should probably attack people with my one-handed, but obviously on horseback. Very difficult to get that working. Bruce is actually almost level 34 as far as I'm aware, but even with a mod like Bannerlord Tweaks that increases the amount of experience gain that you get, I am finding it almost impossible to level up at this point. I think it is, um, I, I think the experience gain, in my opinion at least, does need to be a little bit tweaked because you don't really want to max out at like level 15 or level 20 or something like that and have most of your skills still be at the 100 or so skill level and that's exactly what it would be without the Bandalord Tweaks experience gain at least in my uh, in my previous experience maybe they've changed it by now and it is indeed uh, a little bit better at uh, giving you the amount of experience that you should be gaining to make meaningful progress and because after all, uh, your your skill only takes you so far. You, you know, if you have no traits, then you're always going to be at a disadvantage in regards to one-on-one -on -one combat in tournaments or riding around on a horse. You know, let's say you're up against the heavy lancer or something from the Crusade. He's obviously going to have a massive amount of riding skill, and if you have thirty or whatever, then <laughs> you're going to be in a pretty bad spot. Anyway. Um, I'm just going to let all these people go. Oh, their smiles. It haunts me in my dreams. Look at their smiles. Ah, oh. Okay, get away from me. Thank you. Okay, so let's have a look here. Uh, do we have enough space? Not really. Uh, okay, I'm going to actually just um, go down here a little bit and have a look and see if we can get rid of a couple of people. Looters? Okay, you can, you can go, I guess. I mean, even though they do become good units eventually after leveling them up for quite a, a considerable period of time I actually just want to very quickly get rid of some just to make some space there we go and I don't even know why I clicked on the recruit prisoners button makes no sense considering I'm, I have so many units as it is 
There we go. Get all those horses. Thank you. And I think that should be it for the Kuzate. At least I think that should be it for the amount of vassals that we currently have attacking us. So my plan was to basically just do um, a siege here until we got their walls down. Ah, there's a big army coming. Okay, and now I'm going to send the troops in. Boom, there you go. We lost a grand total of six units. I actually scouted out a castle that had a very small amount of um, defenders in it. It had only about 270 when I started the siege. So in my opinion, that's pretty good, uh, especially for this kind of... Um, opportunistic attack I guess you could call it and otherwise we're just going to wait here for some time we're going to see whether this guy wants to besiege this if he wants to besiege oh no no he's besieging Dinar Castle hilariously enough Dinar Castle yes and uh, we're going to give this to Mr. Saruk I have given most of the uh, property in this area to him and hopefully he's going to do a good job of defending it oh yes all right, so basically what I'm gonna do now is I'm pretty much, as you can no doubt see, we have eaten in quite nicely. We even took Cyronea, by the way, as well. Some of my vassals took that. And um, yeah, so basically what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna wait for the Kuzate to offer us some kind of peace agreement. I'm gonna leave the, uh, should, I leave, should I bother leaving this castle? It's only got seven defenders. Oh, uh, look at that. Is he actually going to come back here? That would be hilarious if he came back here when I leave it. Because I could kind of uh, ping pong him back and forth, if you know what I mean. I could basically get him to, you know, bounce between. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. He's actually doing that. Is he? If he's actually doing that, that is hilarious and uh, somewhat, um, uh, somewhat exploitative. Because as you can see, if I go close to the castle, then this guy will automatically reevaluate his options. And then he'll basically be like, ah, you know what? I'm not going to take Dinar Castle. I'm actually just going to take Kesar Castle because that's undefended, if you know what I mean. So that's pretty amazing. All right, so to cut a long story short, I made peace with the Kuzate after running around that guy, making him basically, as I said, go back and forth between those two fiefs again and again and again. And then eventually I was like, okay, you know what? Let's just leave him alone. And he basically just gave up at that point. He literally just ran away from that uh, particular position and went on to do something else, which is perfectly fine with me. I'm happy with that. And so he went off and now we are at war against the Southern Empire and the Northern Empire. And I don't know whether you can notice, but we actually have a pretty significant army here. And I'm actually going to try and auto resolve because I want to see how many we actually lose with a large force. And look at that. We literally only lose 168 up against almost 1200 units and we have just taken the last fief in the uh, i think it's the southern is it is it southern or no uh, no no it's northern northern empire so we've just taken the last fief in the northern empire and there's also something else very close by that i'd like to do something about and that is this uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to disband the army real quick and we're going to get all these guys to chase after this one Come on, get him. Oh, oh, you're, you're, you're done, sir. You are running into the worst possible positioning that you could possibly run into. Let me actually just create the army real quick. All right, I, I want to pull all these guys back. And annoyingly enough, they just ran off in all kinds of weird directions. I wanted them actually to kind of stick close by to me, but apparently he did not. Uh, they did not do that. Okay, here we go, here we go. They're all coming. Oh, yeah. Come on, guys. Come on. Hurry it up. Hurry it up, guys. There we go. Okay, yeah. That's what I wanted to do. That is what I wanted to do. Now, I'm going to head in myself as well. We're going to go and help the party. We're going to do an auto-resolve once again. Boom. There you go. Literally lose 21 units. That is... I mean, how can you, how can you not? How can you not do that? How can you not do an auto-resolve when you're literally only going to lose 21 units? It's just ludicrous value right there efficiency to the utmost and that's what i really like 
about um, get, getting into the end game where you actually get the opportunity to do these kinds of things. Okay, we're just going to disband the army now. That is perfectly fine. And the owner of Argoron, who's that going to be? That's going to be Tovia, apparently. Okay, sure, I'm happy with this. Technically, I have enough influence now to pretty much give fiefs to whoever I want. So generally, if I see someone getting something that I don't think is actually good, then I'm going to do that. But as Tovia already owns Atrion Castle, it makes a huge amount of sense for him to also look after Argoron. So I'm happy with that. We made peace with the Azurai as well, by the way. And as you can see, this is how the map now looks. The Northern Empire has now been eliminated. All of their... I mean, I personally feel like they will be eliminated relatively soon. I mean, it's only a matter of time uh, for that to happen. And um, yeah, otherwise, we just have the Southern Empire to focus on. The Kuzate, they have quite a few still intact fiefs so we'll have to do something about that your couch lance attacks deal triple damage against shields and increases your defense against mount charge damage by 50 percent uh yeah i think we'll go for unstoppable force that seems like a a good idea um personally i feel like this trait I mean, considering they called this Unstoppable Force, I feel like this trait should be called Immovable Object, but uh, maybe there's another trait in some other tree that is caused that, uh, that is called that uh, even. So that, that would be kind of cool. But anyway, otherwise, we just have four fiefs to eliminate for the Southern Empire, and we have five fiefs for the Azurai, and then many more for the Kuzate. But, um, well, let me actually just show you the combat stats. As you can see, Batania is at zero. They have nothing at all. Northern Empire is at 50. Southern is actually pretty decent with 10,000, hilariously enough. And the Kuzate with 25,000. Western Empire, 741. The Azurai with a respectable 14,000. And the Sturgeons with 355. And of course, you can see the almighty Vlandia at 112,000 almost. So, yeah, we're pretty good. We're pretty good. I think this is basically done. But um, I think I'll see where it goes. I mean, I don't think that any faction is going to be able to come back against us at this point. But I'm probably going to do one more episode at least just to seal everything off just so you can see everything uh, under our control obviously you've seen the strategy that i might end up using uh, for the most part now most of my vassals are going to continue running around taking things as you can see by the army screen here you can see that Melodier is on the way with 2,000 to Lycaron to besiege it. And a number of other people are just doing whatever, basically. But um, everyone pretty much has an overwhelming amount of influence as well. So they will be able to call for armies whenever they want to. And I'm pretty happy with how this has gone. I actually thought that we were going to have a much more difficult time of things when uh, I saw that most factions were actually still intact up until pretty late in the mid game just entering the late game so yeah I, I think that the developers are going in a really nice direction unless that is of course a mod that um, kind of helped out some of the factions to survive a little bit longer but otherwise that's going to be it for this episode i thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time